من الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل له وما يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده رسوله أما بعد Last week we talked about the trimming of the mustache um, The one thing that's left and we always talked about whether we trim or, sh- or shave the mustache One thing that's left is to talk about the uh, talk about the hair that's between the mustache and the beard so meaning this hair here so that's the discussion that we'll talk about now and the reason for this is because there's a dispute amongst the scholars as to whether this hair falls under the beard or the fall under the mustache because it's in right in between so some would consider it that it's you know a continuation of the mustache and others would continue that or claim that everything this way is the beard. So that's where the dispute um, comes from. Um, and then there's difference of opinion on this. So the ones who say that it's part of the beard say that there's no problem in leaving it. Um, and that's the opinion of the majority of the Shafi'is. Um, so they say that this is part of the beard, so it's you don't have to trim it when you trim your mustache. And they make the argument um, that one of the benefits or one of the goals behind trimming the mustache is to keep it clean and to keep it out of the way of the out of, of the mouth um, because you know it might become dirty when someone eats and drinks and that type of thing but this type of hair it's out of that way as well so first of all it's kind of close to the beard second of all it's out of the way of the mouth so you know it, it doesn't fall it doesn't have that cause or that factor of to why we would trim it to begin with like the mustache like so now cut uh, which hair are you talking about? The one that connects yeah. like... Oh, okay. Between the beard and the mustache. Oh, the one that... Okay, yeah. So, like, that would be, I guess, beside your lips. Like, the ones people that say goatee and mix... But if... Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So, so they, they make these two arguments. Um, and then they also mention um, a hadith from uh, Jabir ibn Abdullah, radiallahu anhu, that he said, Kunna nu'fi as-sibala illa fil hajji wal umrah. Or that we used to leave the sibal which is this which is the i don't know what you, if there's a word for this hair in english that type of thing yeah so that they used to leave that hair except in hajj and umrah so that they would only trim it in these two times so obviously if it fell under the ruling of the mustache they would be trimming it more often than once a year or you know twice a year depending on how often they would do they would do um hajj and umrah um and this is narrated from or by abu dawood um and a number of ulama have considered it hasan at the most. And Allahu alam, the stronger opinion is that it's considered weak. So it would that hadith itself wouldn't be usable as evidence, but the other arguments could be used um, in the sense that uh, it's not part of the mustache; it's more part of the beard, um, and that it, you know, it it's not in the way of of the mouth. So when you're eating and drinking, it wouldn't um, collect any any dirt and that type of thing. Um, the next opinion is that it should be trimmed, and that's based upon the idea that it's part of the mustache. Um, and the evidence that's used for this, we talked about the hadith, or we talked about it um, last week and the week before, is from Abu Umama al Bahili, that he said, Ya Rasulullah, inna ahl al kitab, yakusun athanina hum, wa yuafiruna sibala hum, faqala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, kusu sibala kum. وَوَفِّرُوا عَثَانِينَكُمْ هُوَ خَالِفُ أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ Or that Abu Umama al-Bahili narrated that it was said to the Prophet O Messenger of Allah, the people of Ahl Kitab, or the uh, people of the book, trim their, or they cut their beards and they grow their sibal long, so meaning like this area here. Um, so he said, uh, to trim your sibal and to grow your beards lengthy, to be different, than Ahl Kitab, and this is narrated by um, Al Tabarani in Al Mu'jam Al Kabir, and some of the scholars have said that it's Hassan. Um, Allahu Alam about both of them. To me, it seems like there's nothing authentic on both, whether that it's that it's that you trim it or that you leave it. So in the end, it would be up really. It would be up to the person's choice. That there's, since there's nothing clearly authentic as to whether you grow it or you trim it, then we would say that. Um, if the person considers it to be part of his beard, it's up to him. If he then he or then he should leave it. But if he considers it to be part of his mustache, 
then um, you know he would trim it along with his mustache. And Allahu Alam, because of that dispute and because of the fact that there's nothing clear on the topic, it would be you know quite a, a wide open you know a, a decision. You know, like if if someone chose to trim it we wouldn't really say anything to them and if they chose to leave it we wouldn't really say anything to them either just because for something if we have clear evidence about the mustache to trim it clear evidence about the beard to leave it we have nothing about this it's tough to say that the person should do this and shouldn't do this um, so Allahu Alam you know both would be permissible and would be up to the person's uh, person's choice so the hadith about them doing hajj or umrah is weak? Yeah. So that, that first opinion is that it should be kept, like it should be trimmed. That it, that you that you can leave it. That it that it doesn't doesn't have to be trimmed with the mustache. Because it, because like we know we have to trim the mustache. So if we consider it part of the mustache, then technically we should be trimming it as well. But because like you know some of the ulama mentioned that it that the harms in leaving that aren't present in you know like in this part of the hair, right? Like if you leave it over, it's obvious. That you need to trim your mustache anyone who sees it but if this hair is long it's going to go downward mm. it's not going to be covering your mouth it's not going to become dirty it's not really in the way you know it's so allah alam that would be you know there wouldn't be any um, harm in leaving it or trimming it done and this is uh, this opinion the second opinion yeah it's taken by hanafi and maliki or well the rest of them other than even Saudi. even like lots of them didn't even talk about it so only certain people talked about it, like, um, yeah, like not not every, like everyone talked about the mustache. Not every, not all of the ulama really discussed this part of the hair. So yeah. So that's the end of the mu- issue of the mustache. Next, the author mentions um, letting one's beard grow and become thick. Um, and he says this is a feature of dignity. It should not be cut so short that it appears like a shaved beard, nor should it be left so long that it becomes untidy. Um, it is also a sign of manhood. Al-Bukhari says, whenever Ibn Umar made Hajj or Umrah, he would hold his beard in his fist, and whatever exceeded his fist, he would cut it off. So this is what the author mentions about the keeping of the beard. Um, so just a few things to mention on this. First. Or the evidence that we look for, that we have from the Sunnah, with regards to um, keeping the beard, um, the first thing is what we talked about in the beginning of, of this uh, of this chapter, is that um, keeping the beard is from the fitrah, um, and we know that from the Hadith of Aisha radiAllahu anha, that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Ashram min al fitrah," and one of them um, that he mentioned was "Ifa al lihya," or that ten things are from the fitrah. And one of them was to um, leave to leave the beard or to let it grow lengthy. And that hadith is narrated by Muslim. Um, other evidences, and I'll just mention some of them just because the author didn't mention any of the evidences, is that the hadith from Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu anhuma, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, Anhiku uh, shawarib wa'afu liha, or from Abdullah bin Umar that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, literally translated means wear out the mustache so meaning like um, you know trim it to the point where it's almost gone um, and leave the beard and that's narrated by al-Bukhari um, and also from Abdullah bin Umar or another narration of the same hadith that the Prophet ﷺ said خَالِفُ الْمُشْرِكِينَ وَوَفِّرُ الْلِحَى وَأَعْفُ الشَّوَارِبِ which translates as contradict the mushrikeen or be different than them Grow the beards plentiful and remove the mustache, and that's narrated by al-Bukhari as well. <coughs> and also from uh, Abu Hurairah radiAllahu anhu, that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Juzu shawarib wa arkhul liha khaliful majus," or trim the mustaches and let the beard, uh, the beards flow, contradict the majus, and the majus are the Zoroastrians. Um, there's not too many of them left today, but there's still some. And the hadith is narrated by Muslim. Um, and then also there's the hadith that we mentioned about the the majus being mentioned to the Prophet ﷺ and what they do, that they grow their beards, they trim, their, they shave their beards and leave their mustaches long. So the Prophet ﷺ said to be different than them and um, to do the different, to do different than them. Um, 
So this is just the general evidence with regards to um, leaving the beard. So and it fits into the topic. The reason why we're discussing it, you know, because obviously it's in the book that uh, that we're going through, and also it's you know this chapter is about the the characteristics of the fitra, um, and this is one of the ten that was mentioned in the hadith of Aisha. So now just to go into a, a bit more. Um, detail about some of the issues of what can be trimmed from it or can anything be trimmed from it to begin with um, and the shaving of it and so on <clears throat> so first of all there's a consensus um, of the scholars or that they've all agreed and formed a jama that it's forbidden to shave the beard so with regards to shaving there's a consensus that it's not allowed um, this was mentioned by Imam Ibn Hazm um, in his book, Maratab al ijma or the, the levels of ijma or consensus. And also Ibn Abidin al-Hanafi mentioned it as well in Tanqih um, al-Fatawa al-Hamidiyah. Um, so this is his book that he mentioned it in it. Um, the only ones who disputed this was a small, small number of, of the later scholars of the Shafi'iyyah. But this is considered a rejected opinion just because it was... It's not the full madhab, it's a very small number of them and they contradicted a consensus that was formed beforehand. Um, and we know that anything that contradicts the consensus of the Muslims um, is considered to be um, a wrong opinion. So this is with regards to actually shaving it completely. The next issue is, and this is, you know, lots of you have asked about this before, um, and I always told you that we would eventually discuss it. So this is going to be the discussion. So, you know, um, it might be a little bit lengthy, but inshallah, it'll be beneficial for you guys. Um, so the ruling on taking from the beard, there's a number of opinions <coughs> about this topic. So the first opinion is that it's disliked to take anything from it except during um, Hajj and Umrah. And that's the, sh the opinion of the Sharia. So outside of Hajj, it's not, they say that you shouldn't take anything from it. During Hajj and Umrah, you can take some from it, which we'll get into the amount. Um, the second opinion is that it's allowed to take from it. And then we'll get into the amount. Um, there's a dispute about the amount. Um, and this, the um, opinion that it's allowed to take some from it, it's narrated from a number of the Sahaba, that we'll, we'll, as we'll see right away, as well as the Tabi'een. Um, and uh, it's narrated from Muhammad ibn Sirin, who's from the major imams of the Tabi'een, and that was narrated by Ibn Abi Shayba. Also from um, Qatada, rahimahullah, who's from the Tabi'een, and that was narrated by Ibn Abd al Bar in Al Tamheed, and Ata from the Tabi'een as well, uh, was narrated by Ibn Abi Shayba, and Al Sha'bi, and Al Qasim ibn Muhammad, um, and Tawus, and Ibrahim al Nakhai and others. So there's many of the, the tabi'een uh, who took the opinion that it was permissible to take some of the hair off from the beard. Um, and it's also the madhab of the ahnaf and the malikiya and the hanbalis. Um, so this is the this is the opinion that you can take from it. So then within the, um, the, the within the idea or within the opinion that it's permissible to take from the beard, there's a number of disputes about what's the amount that's allowed to be taken. Is it recommended to take it? Is it obligatory? Is it is it disliked? So this is where there's a dispute. The sooner I hear this opinion, is, is it just for Hajj and Umrah as well? Or just anytime? in general, in general, anytime. yeah, anytime. So within those who say that it's that it, it's allowed to take some or to remove some of the beard, there's um, the first opinion about the amount is that it's obligatory. It's obligatory to take whatever's beyond the fist length. So they say, you know, when, you, when you'd grow your beard and then you'd, you know, get to a point exactly, and then so you'd, you know, take a fist length and look and anything that was past it, you'd trim it and that that's actually obligatory upon you to do. And that was the opinion of the Ahnaf as well as Imam Al-Tabari. And we talked about Imam Al-Tabari last week and how he had a madhab at one point, but it became, or it, it kind of went away throughout time and it wasn't one of the main schools of thought that remained like we have of the four four schools of thought the second opinion is that it's sunnah so they say it's not obligatory for you to take that amount off but it would be recommended for you to do so 
and that it would be so if the person did it they would be rewarded for doing so if they didn't do it there would be no harm on them but they also wouldn't be rewarded um, and this is uh, another opinion in the Hanafi madhab um, as well as Imam al-Shafi'i and Muhammad ibn Sirin from the Tabi'in so they say that it's recommended to do so um, the third opinion is that it's left up to the person's choice um, so if they want to remove that they can if they want to leave it they can if you know it's 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 anything beyond that amount would be permissible um, and that you know it would be up to the person's choice if they felt like trimming it they could if they felt like leaving it they could um, and that's that's the opinion of Imam Ahmed the fourth is that it's better to leave it um, and they say that uh, that story and that's one of the opinions of the Hanbalis and the last or fifth opinion is that it's disliked to do so except in the Hajj um, and the Umrah um, so this is the where the dispute comes about the timing and whether it's obligatory or not um, <coughs> so to begin with we, we know we've talked about the evidences that it should be left so that's clear so now we're going to talk about what is the evidences that are the exception to that general rule so we know that we, like we talked about before, if we have evidence that's general, we stick to that um, until we have something that gives an exception to it. So, you know, we've clearly proven the general evidence that it should be left. So now, well, what are the um, evidences that would um, make an exception to that general rule? Um, the, uh, the hadith from Abdullah ibn Umar, in which he mentioned that the Prophet ﷺ said that we should leave the beard and trim the mustache. Then Imam al-Bukhari in his narration, he mentions that he said, and Ibn Umar performed Hajj, or whenever Ibn Umar would perform Hajj or Umrah, he would grab his beard um, in his fist and whatever was past it, he would um, trim it, or he would take, o- take away whatever was, um, uh, whatever was uh, past the fist length. So the argument here is that Abdullah ibn Umar, first of all, he's a Sahabi, so we know that they're the most knowledgeable of the, of the Ummah because they were the students of the Prophet ﷺ and they were the ones who were present in w- when the Qur'an was being revealed. Furthermore, Ibn Umar, he's the actual narrator of the hadith. So one of the rules when it comes to the sciences or the, the rules of fiqh is that a narrator of a hadith, is his understanding of the hadith would always be put before someone who didn't narrate the hadith because they, if, someone, if the Prophet ﷺ tells someone something, Obviously, the person who he told is going to understand it better in most situations than someone who wasn't told. Because they know, okay, when did the Prophet ﷺ tell me this? Why did he tell me this? What context would, did this take place? And all these things which would give that person a, um, you know, w- which would give that person's opinion more weight compared to the ones who didn't narrate it. So here we have Abdullah bin Umar. He's a companion. He's from the com- scholars of the companions and he's the narrator of the hadith. So they say obviously this would prove that it's permissible to um, take take from the beard. Next they mention the verse when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, ثُمَّ الْيَقْذُوا تَفَثَهُمْ وَالْيُوفُوا نُذُورَهُمْ وَالْيَطَّوَّفُوا بِالْبَيْتِ الْعَطِيقِ Or that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, then let them complete their prescribed duties uh, and perform their vows and, and circum, circum, com, perform tawaf around the ancient house. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is explaining about some of the, th- the matters that need to be performed when the person is in hajj. And that's from Surah Al-Hajj verse 29. So in the explanation of this verse or the tafsir, it's narrated from uh, Abdullah ibn Abbas that he said, At-tafath, so he's now he's describing the, um, the prescribed duties. So that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that we need to complete these things. Now, Abdullah bin Abbas, who's one of the companions, is explaining what these things are. So he said, At-tafath, al-rami, wal-dhabih, wal-halq, wal-taqseer, wal-akhth min al-sharib, wal-adhafir, wal-lihya. Or that Abdullah bin Abbas said, um, the prescribed duties are the throwing, so meaning the throwing of the, the stones at the, 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 uh, the pillars in Mecca, um, the sacrifice, so slaughtering while we're in Mecca, Shaving, so meaning shaving the head, cutting, again cutting the, the hair, taking from the mustache, the nails, and the beard. And that's narrated by Ibn Abi Shayba. Um, so here they say 
or Abdullah bin Abbas is explaining that um, part of the Hajj or part of the, the prescribed duties of Hajj is to do these things and included in that is to be to take what is extra off of the lahya or off of the beard um, and this, this, this tafsir has also come from Mujahid um, Rahimahullah who was one of the students of Abdullah bin Abbas um, uh, that he said um, when he was describing what this, this tafath or what this prescribed duties were he said halq al-ra's wa halq al-ana wa qasr al-adhafir wa qasr al-sharib wa ramy al-jimar wa qasr al or that it was shaving the head shaving the pubic area cutting the nails cutting the mustache throwing the stones and cutting the beard and that was narrated by uh, Imam al-Tabari as well um, so the ones who say that it could be done or it should be done in Hajj or that it's obligatory to take what's beyond this they say that here we have evidence from Abdullah bin Abbas describing that when Allah SWT told us that these are the prescribed duties that we need to do so obviously it would be obligatory Abdullah bin Abbas is, is describing that these are the um, these, this is what is meant by it um, however there's another narration of this as well that mentions the same things but it doesn't mention the beard so the ones others say well no I mean the, the, if we and we talked about before um, uh, a number of times and we talked about it today when in the hadith class about what what is a shad narration so that is when someone narrates something with a certain phrase someone else comes and narrates the same thing but with with part of the phrase missing so what do we do in this point we have to look to which one is more authentic um, so this would be considered part of that for those who reject the, uh, um, the idea of trimming the beard uh, during Hajj or that it's that it's obligatory to trim it in that sense so this is um, generally what we have with regards to trimming the beard so in the end the most authentic and the clearest expl- the clearest evidence that we have is the action of Abdullah bin Umar um, uh, you know because it's narrated by, uh, by al-Bukhari so obviously it's at you know the height of authenticity and it's Abdullah bin Umar and we know that he was a companion he was from the scholars of the companions he was known for even going sometimes too far in following the Prophet wasallam. so he would do things that shouldn't be done trying to follow what the Prophet wasallam did so even things that were generally that we wouldn't say you should or even like are recommended to follow he would go that far in trying to follow them so if we have Abdullah bin Umar doing this it's unlikely that he would have done this knowing that this is against what the Prophet ﷺ wanted us to do from it so really in the end it comes down to um, this narration what does this prove does this prove that it's permissible to remove beyond the, the, the fist length all year round does it prove that it's only for Hajj and Umrah does it prove that it's obligatory to do it in Hajj and Umrah because he's explaining a hadith in which the Prophet to do, told us to do something all of these things come down um, to this uh, to this narration um, in the end Allahu alam to me what seems to be the strongest opinion out of all of them is that it's permissible it's not obligatory or recommended to remove that beyond that amount it's also not forbidden or disliked to do so so to me what seems to be the strongest is the opinion of Imam Ahmed which I think was number three who said that it's up to the person that if they want to leave that then it's permissible um, but if they want to take that amount off then it's permissible for them as well um, yeah so that's uh, only the fist size that's it, yeah? the fist size some some of the ulama say that it would be any amount that doesn't change that doesn't make it look like it's not a full beard anymore um, so meaning like if you know say you trimmed it beyond more than that if it still looked like a full beard Allahu uh, alam I I can't uh, I, I you know if, if we know that in general you can't take from it because of the hadith and um, we only have one evidence from the Sahaba that's clear about how to cut it than to say well because you know they they use the fist length that any any amount more than that is fine as well that seems like a big stretch so uh, the people who actually go as far as you know making it like as clean as uh, you know like 
basically like you know that it's it's stubble, it's yeah. very 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 like uh, small yeah so that they have no basis for that well they they try to argue and they say and you know it's sorry to say that one of the you know major speakers nowadays that travels around was was saying this and he said that the statement of Ibn Umar or sorry the action shows that you can take from it but if we say you can take this much then why why can't you take more and they and then he said or he tried to explain the hadith that we you know we talked about wa'fu laha wa laha all these these phrasings he translated one of them as save so save the beard then he made an argument and he said if you had uh, you know say you were making a thousand dollars a month and every month you only put one dollar away to, so you did the least amount possible wouldn't we say that linguistically it's correct that you saved money or mm-hmm. you saved the first problem with this is none of the hadith say save that's the first problem what does that mean? It mean means, means make it lots yeah I guess yeah if you have a million dollars and you leave 10 cents, would you say you made like you made it lots? You'd say no. you, you left nothing. It's the complete opposite. So that's the first thing, is the mistranslation of the hadith. The second thing is, if we say, well, what is the, the problem with doing it more? We say, because generally we can't. We only have from the Sahaba doing a certain length. So for us to then go beyond that and say, well, we can, because he only took this amount, that means we can take any amount? Then mm-hmm. what's, what, what explain what weight does it give to the actions of the Sahaba after that? What about like not even taking from it, just cleaning up around it and stuff? Like, like what do you mean? Like, like just the baby hairs and stuff. That's fine. Like, I mean, even down here is technically not considered part of the beard. Once you're, once you're onto the throat. Like, up to the... I don't know what you call this. The... Yeah. the, the where, where the... Like, the under the... the, uh, the <laughs> gold. The, like what's the it called? Did you know in this area? Like that's anything beyond that. Yeah, under here. Because now it's, it's not onto your it's throat a neck. now. It's a neck. It's part of your neck or part of your throat. It's not it's not on the jaw. Yeah. You said tell me that. This isn't part of my beard down here, right? Like these little hairs. Well, Hanum, it doesn't. I mean, it seems pretty far. Looks like your neck. <laughs> and then with regards to up here, yeah, a there's a dispute, like because literally the <coughs> the word lahya, um, which is beard. It comes down to, or the 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 word, um, or that it's referring to, like to the mandible bone, which is the the lahyain, which that's the the name of the bone. So some say that the lahya is all is only the hair that grows on the beard of the lahya, of the the bone of the lahyain. Oh, well, that's why people do like lines here. Too. So that's why some people, even yeah, you'll see, yeah, yeah. especially like uh, ahnaf, ahnaf, or even yeah, some yeah, of the yeah, Malikiya, yeah. they yeah. they'll shave everything except except for this amount. They base it, they say, because the lahya, what is the lahya linguistically? It's oh. the hair that's on the lahyain. The lahyain is the is the like mandible the bone, the jaw bone, yeah. So anything beyond that, they say, is not considered part of the lahya. So, I mean, Allahu Alam, that seems like a weak opinion. Like it, it might be that originally the, ro- the root of the word is from the bone, but the whole, it's all of this that would be considered the beard, though. So personally, I don't agree with that myself. But then so we know that we, we know we're supposed to lengthen it for sure, right? Yeah. What I'm saying is, if, if we know for sure we could cut it this length, if you cut it this length or you cut it here, isn't that still lengthening it? It's still is lengthening it, it but I mean, I, I understand it, but I mean, then then what if someone says, well, how about instead of, you know, because this would be four finger lengths, right? Yeah. What if I do two? Like, what's Know, Where's the really cutoff then? The like, line, if like the only exactly. So, if the only thing we have is is Sahaba only doing this, it opens up the door because then someone can say, well, no, what's the big deal if we do four is to three? And someone say, well, that's not a big deal. And someone will say, well, then three to two, that's not a big deal. No, it's not because each is only one, right? But in the end, you're gonna have like you go from having this this long to like something that's almost nothing, right? Yeah. And each each one of it was only a step of nothing, but in the end, it ended up being something. That's all we have, yeah. And during the time of the Prophet? Not that we know of, no. It would be after. So this is after? Yeah, so what they say is that Abdullah bin Umar, who was a, you know, a well-known companion, doing this in Hajj and Umrah, it's unlikely that other people didn't see him doing this. It's almost impossible. 
because it was actually narrated, like you know, it was, it was passed down as being being done. So we know that if something is seen as or done by a companion and it becomes well known that this was done by them and amongst like the other companions and we don't have any um, rebuking or, or none of them said that it was wrong then it, it's called what's or it's, call it like ijma sukuti or like tacit tacit agreement or tacit uh, um, yeah tacit agreement or or consensus so it's it's not to the level of a, like a clear consensus but it's still according to the stronger opinion is that it still has some weight still gives some evidence as proof so if we have Abdullah bin Umar doing this in Hajj which is you know um, it's going to be it's going to be packed like people are going to see he was someone who people used to go to to receive a hadith from and used to go seek knowledge with him so it wasn't like just some guy in Hajj by himself like people would have been following him around and he had many many students and that type of thing it's it's unlikely that no one knew this about him um, or that they knew about it and decided not to say anything. So, yeah. Is there anything solid that says that it's part of Hajj? Like, I know you mentioned it was Hadith with it, that and with the Ulam. Allah Alam, like, like that it's not... Because um, if, if we say that it falls under that verse, then we would have to say at the very least it's recommended to cut it in Hajj. But the fact that we have nothing from the Prophet, nothing from the Sahaba doing it in his lifetime, how can we then say it's actually recommended to do so in Hajj? Like, they, we would have had something from the Prophet. So I said, that like, you can at least, you can take that no less, for example. Right. Why would, you, wouldn't it be better to play it safe and just do that during Hajj? Do you know what I mean? Rather than risking it, what if it was part of those... Uh, someone can make that argument, but then I think that at the same time, someone on the opposite hand would say, because we only have it from one companion, and we don't have anything from the Prophet Wasallam. We know that the estimates in the Hajj al like the, in the, when the Prophet ﷺ made Hajj, the estimates are there was about 100,000 to 110,000 Sahaba at the time. Nothing narrated from him. It's probably to play it safe would be to not do it. So if you had to choose. So you can understand it as as like uh, being okay to do this, but it's not the way of the Prophet ﷺ. So it it would be that that when the Prophet ﷺ said to wafiru warhu. Wa'fu. It doesn't mean don't take anything from it. It means make it make it big. Yeah. So but if you if, do that, if you think it's okay. that it's like this, then you know you still have a beard that this long and yeah. it's big. On I mean, you're still falling under those ahadith. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam from his description. Yeah. Yani we don't have nothing about his beard. He had a full We beard. know that you could see it from behind. Because they used to know, like in Dhuhr and Asr, they knew he would. But I mean, like, it's unlikely that someone has a beard this, like, you know, and and it doesn't go down at all. Yeah. yeah. It's, I mean, it's possible, but it's it's probably unlikely. Like Sam. Well, what do you mean you can see it from behind? Like when they 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 um, asked some of the companions about how they knew that the Prophet Sallallahu would recite anything during Dhuhr and Asr, and they said we knew because his his beard would move, so they were able to see it from behind. Okay. So they knew he was saying something because you know his beard would move when he would speak. So what are we interpreting? Just how lar- large it, he had that large of a beard that it was visible from behind. It doesn't tell us anything about the length, but it's unlikely that it's visible from behind, but then really short, right? Like, not, not, not naturally, hair doesn't grow that way usually. So two things. Uh, firstly, the Prophet ﷺ said uh, in English that it's uh, you should leave it. Right. So uh, making like shaving from hair or shaving from hair, whatever grows, you leave it, right? Shaving it from either of the places, that's. That's different, right? You're not leaving it. What I coming out. Right. So I mean, but then that comes down to, like he told us to leave the beard. So is this like down here? Is this part of the beard? Because if it's not part of the beard, then 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 cutting it doesn't fall under the hadith. Okay. Likewise, like if hair, say it grows up to almost by the eyes, okay. is that considered part of the beard, or is it considered just like thick hair on the face, that's independent of the beard, right? Like. But hair doesn't grow like right on the jawline. It grows like it, it takes up space in the cheek as well. So right. if you're getting here or there, that's what's coming out. You should leave that. Myself, I agree with that opinion. Like the the opinion that it's only on the jawbone, I don't agree with. Just I understand like linguistically, we know a lot of times like there might be a, a linguistic basis for something, you know, as to where it, where the word came from. Right. But it doesn't necessarily mean it only includes that. Okay. Like so, yes, it probably you know. Um, 
the, the hair on the face is, is linguistically attributed to the jawbone, but it grows everywhere. Right. So everything that was actually the beard would fall would fall under the that, um, and you know, and we would say that just the, the linguistic root word for for the beard is is related to the like the mandible bone, but that's all. So secondly, when you started this discussion on the beard, you mentioned something about dignity and manhood. Yeah. And you mentioned that it shouldn't be too long. What that's what the author about? mentioned. Yeah. They mentioned that there's there's from Imam Malik that he said that you shouldn't grow it so long that it becomes shahra or like. Um, we had translate like, uh, like show, showing off or like I mean, no, it's no, no, it's, no. Uh, it's making people stare at you about it. Mm-hmm. Like so, like you know, like if you have a, like every everyone pretty much has like if if I walk into the masjid with a beard like this, no one is going to pay attention. But if you walk in and it's down to your stomach, everyone's going to be staring at you and that type of thing. So some of the ulama said because if if you had a beard that long and then you say you trimmed it in half even, you still have a like a really lo- big beard. Like the brother with the long beard. Yeah. Right, so like like I mean, everybody, I think, you know, almost everyone here has mentioned, yeah. hey, there's a guy, like, with so obviously yeah. he stands out to everyone, right? Yeah. So they say, like, uh, some of the ulama said it, at that point it would be better because even when you cut it, you still, um, you know, you still had, the, you still fall under um, uh, wafiru yeah. because it's already, it's still a huge beard. It's still arhu because it's flowing. Um, wa'fu, like I mean, sure you cut from it, you didn't leave it completely, but you did leave a huge beard on you. So, Allahu alam. I mean, whether you should cut it or it's permissible, Allahu alam. I wouldn't be able to say at that point. Yeah. Harmful. It stands out if you if you being noticed by everyone, at, like you know, because like back then, I'm not saying this is what yeah. I'm saying. Back then, everyone had beards, right? Mm-hmm. But in the West, where there was no, not a lot of people have beards. Yeah. And then people are going to be standing out. Yeah, but I mean, like for us, <coughs> we don't care if we stand out amongst non-Muslims. Oh yeah. Right, because the point of it is to be different, so they'll know. Okay, these people are, people are Muslimin. It's it's one of the best ways to make da'wah. Because if every if no one knew anyone who's Muslim, who are they gonna ask? Who are they gonna? It's never gonna come to their mind even about Islam, right? But if some if like if you know if you're at work and you're the only Muslim there and you stand out, people are gonna probably gonna ask, well, how come you pray five times a day? How come you have a beard? How come you don't eat this? How come you believe this? So if you didn't stand out, that opportunity wouldn't be there. So first of all, it's as actually it's a good means of da'wah. Second, we know that not everyone had beards at the time because the Prophet ﷺ would say, do this and this to be different than these people. So we know that some people shaved their beards. We know some people didn't trim their mustaches. So he didn't say, you know, do what everybody else is doing. He said, this is the Islamic ruling. And, you know, if it happens to be what that's what people do at the same time, fine. If it's not, you know, we still do it anyway. It has nothing to do with, uh, like, you know, the society around. Yeah. So all the hadith of the beard just basically lengthen it and trim the mustache. One says, one says le- like for the beard, one says leave it. Um, one just leave it. One says make it lengthy, and one says let it flow, like let it be like be flowing. Okay, but there is one that says just leave it. Yeah. Okay, so that kind of changes everything. Then. But anyway. then they say like, does that mean like you have to leave it completely, or that you have to leave it enough so that it flows? So they, they, they have to you know reconcile between the three, right? Yeah. The three phrasings. So some say, well, no, as long as it's left enough that it, it achieves these other things, that's the, t- that's the amount that it needs to be left. Okay. Yeah. So I have two quick questions. Okay. Uh, the one where you're talking about the bars. Mm-hmm. Okay. Allah, does that, is that considered all the inside right here, or just this? What's part of the mustache? Like all in here, too? Or just I consider it here, like so... The so part that's that's beside your lip, the only s- there, like down to where to, to you know to where it connects with your with the actual you know hair of the beard. Okay, when it says untidy and tidy, yeah, or even looking nice or whatever. Hello. Where? For the beard. Where does it say that? Like what no, are you no, referring to? No, no, I'm to? saying like where it says uh, it shouldn't look untidy. What says that though? I mean, that's yeah, what I'm asking you. Well, in general, it doesn't right here. It shouldn't be left so long so it doesn't look untidy. Okay. Okay, that part. Let's say, Yani, you have a messed up beard. You should obviously make it look nice as a Muslim, no? 
you should comb it. You yeah. know, if you have like one hair sticking out that doesn't match with everything else, you can trim that. Okay. I mean, but the question I have is, what if like the inside of your beard, like let's say right here near the bars, not the bars themselves, but yeah. right here. Let's say hair grows here and hair doesn't grow here. Yeah. So if you let it grow, obviously you'd have like a full side here and then here would be empty. Yeah. To remove that, to make it look even would... If it's part of the beard along, then we should just leave it. Okay. And the other one is, I've heard about uh, the two fists. Where does that come from? I never heard that before. Okay. Two fists? Yeah. I never heard that before. I've heard about uh, taking two fists yeah, and Yeah, it's just, it's one. Okay. <laughs> so next, the next the author starts talking about things related to the hair, so combing it, oiling it, dyeing it, pl uh, plucking, um, you know, the permissibility or the impermissibility of plucking gray hairs, things like that. Um, but inshallah, it's, we'll leave that for for uh, next week. Inshallah, if there's any questions, we'll go to that. Allahu alam.